What's going on guys? This is Empty Box and today we're going to be talking about the sim racing community and the bullcrap and other stuff and, and yeah. I've been wanting to make this video for a while uh, but it's just never really been the right time and I guess now is as good of a time as any because it seems like the time I would do something like that because that's what I do. So for those of you guys who like the racing and the action, yeah, that, that's not this video. This is going to be an opinion video. I know a lot of you guys don't like these videos. So just go ahead and close the video, move on, carry on about your day, and everything will be perfectly fine. But I want to kind of start uh, with background and information about this, this podium that I get to speak from because of this channel. Uh, I think it will make more sense once I just start talking about it. But uh, anyways, I've been sim racing for a very long time. You know, my first racing sim was either NASCAR Racing 1999 season or Grand Prix Legends, the demo that was on the disc for that game. You know, it's it surely by happenstance, you know, we were out at Best Buy one day and we got a one of those game packs that you got back in like the late 90s that had like three hit games in one box. You know, and that was that. And then that Christmas, I got a steering wheel, a Microsoft Sidewinder, non-force feedback. Remember the days of the Microsoft Sidewinder. But, uh, you know, and that was pretty much that. Then a little bit later on, uh, I think it was actually late 2000, early 2001 was when the ad came out. But I remember reading reading Auto Week, and I saw the, the ad for NASCAR Racing 4, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> like, look at the cockpit. It's the, the NASCAR and the... the closeness and the racing and the colors and everything like whoa and then you know keep on rolling throughout the years and you know NASCAR racing 2003 season obviously that comes out and that was kind of one of the moments where I started to get more into the community side of things and the various tracks that were out there the car sets the mods you know everything that was available and actually one of the big reasons behind that was I just wanted to know how to paint a car and then it's like whoa there's this whole world out there like I whoa so I mean by no means am I you know one of the OG guys who have been here since you know the original IndyCar racing the simulation but you know I've been around for a while you know so you know not just the NASCAR racing the papyrus stuff you know there was F1 challenge you know, that was a big one that I sunk a whole heck of a lot of time into. Sports Car Challenge Mod by RSDG. Best thing ever. Still have a disc with it burned on there just in case. Although F1 Challenge doesn't work on modern computers. The bestest, at least in my experience. But, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where I've been around long enough that I've seen an evolution in the community. As well as now with this platform that I have had with this whole YouTube channel and what that has exposed to me. It, it's really it's really eye-opening like I can't not notice it because I find it both incredibly fascinating and slightly depressing because these games are so enjoyable to me like that, that it's what I enjoy doing it's kinda like a hobby you know it, some people you know fly RC airplanes some people race RC cars I play virtual race cars woo hey go fast have fun right now don't get me wrong back in the days of race sim central you know, back in the days, there was still feuding between Sims. You know, there was still the the pappy bashing from the ISI crowd, and then there was still the the ISI like those guys think they have a sim from the papyrus crowd. There, you know, there was still the tension, but by and large, most people stayed in their own lanes and it, it coexisted to a degree. And you know, of course, things changed throughout the years with. You know, Papyrus going the way of the dodo thanks to losing the NASCAR license and everything, and then iRacing coming up out of nowhere, and I could do a whole story on that one, because uh, that's all a bunch of... <laughs> those are fun times in the community, but, you know, for the most part, it was an enjoyable place to be in, and it was an enjoyable atmosphere, and people had fun playing the games, and people were actually playing the games as evidenced by the fact that there was actually people online playing the games that you could race against. Nowadays, not so much. Now this isn't a baking May Day or get off mainland or alternatively if you don't love it, leave it type of video, but rather 
Are we actually making a better community, or are we just making a mess of things? That way we have a mess of things, and nobody's enjoying these games, nobody's having fun, and we're all just stuck in our small little cliques doing our little thing, because that's all we want to do, because we're too petty to get over it, and just have fun playing some freaking racing games. Let me put it this way. The stupid, pointless, never-ending bullcrap... The arguments that are never going to be won serve no purpose and have already well and truly run their course really do absolutely nothing but make our community more negative, make everybody more unhappy, and make fewer people playing the game for themselves. You know, for example, we've been complaining about the subtle course of various lack of this and that for how many years? Well, actually probably about three or four now, even though the game's been released for like two and a half because they kind of botched the early access. Remember that, guys? You know, we've been complaining about iRacing's prices and how expensive they are and the physics for nearly a decade. Nearly a decade! But yet, we're still having the same thing, and we still got people who go to that easy argument every single time that they can get, even when it has nothing to do with iRacing. You know, you get Automobilista and the people complaining that, oh, it's just our factor, when, quite frankly, here in 2017, uh, I would honestly say the plus side for that game is the fact that it is based on that engine and it does work competently and it doesn't shoot itself in the face repeatedly multiple times over. You know, you still get people five years after the fact complaining about how R Factor 2 looks like crap. And then, of course, you get the fanboys of the games who are basically like, Oh yeah, my, my R-Factor 2 thermonuclear tire model, yeah! You know, those guys. You know, the, the iRacing... Well, only iRacing builds the cars the way iRacing does. Guys, like, what is that? Look at, look at the results that has actually given you. Like, <laughs> come on now. Like, let's move past that. You know, the Assetto Corsa... You know, fans who like anything that isn't a subtle Corsa, you know, you get these guys who are just like, nope, can't exist. You know, you get the Project Cars, the militant fanboy force that it is. Like, you know, it's just like, guys, like, we're all here to play some friggin' video games. I mean, aren't we? You know, getting drivers into your title, into your preferred game of choice, isn't about that game over there is bad, the one that you're playing is terrible, so play my game instead. Uh, you know, if I can... Forgive me for throwing the live grenade into the pile here on this one, but, you know, if we can talk a little bit about politics here. You know, you look at the 2016 U.S. political election. You had Hillary Clinton and you had Donald Trump, okay? And for the record, I support neither of them. I didn't vote for either one of them because they both suck. But uh, you had one candidate who was just doing all this crap, yada, 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 make America great again, and Mexico's going to pay for it. And then you have the other candidate and Hillary who is just like, that person's bad. I'm here. Give me the presidency. And, you know, staying within politics, even though this is a dangerous place to be playing in, you got to give people a reason to vote for you. You know, other than, that's bad. Um, I'm here. That's bad. You know, you, you can't do that. And... You know, you saw, for example, Bernie Sanders. He was giving people a reason to believe in him, and we can all go down how he got screwed over and all that bullcrap. And no, I wasn't a Bernie supporter either, I think, at all. But, uh, you know, it's it's just like, that's how you create people getting interested. You know, that's how you get people excited. You give them a reason to believe, you give them something to be excited in, rather than, that's bad, I'm over here, that's bad. You know, just like, you stay over there. You're nasty. You're deplorable. All you other simulations, you're deplorable. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't do anything. The only thing that type of behavior creates is more of the same type of behavior that you're trying to say is deplorable in the first place. So, sort of moving away here, we have to make sim racing fun. You know, if you want to get players involved, if you want to get people more active in your games, it can't be this idea of how terrible everything else is and how your game is perfect and your community can do no wrong and you know all the other communities are terrible. They're actually all the same. I've been around these games long enough. I've played these games long enough. I've lurked the forums long enough. I've posted on the forums long enough. 
I've done these videos long enough to know that there's one thing that we can actually do and we can really grow this community. Not by having these little arguments about, you know, which one has the better physics and all this stuff constantly 24-7 because apparently our simulation lives depend on it, but rather by showing people why these games are fun, you know, why you should want to get involved, you know, I, I mean, I'm not, you know, a hardcore R Factor 2 user, I mean, I give the game a shot because that's what I promise to do when I do these videos, but I can guarantee you I've sold more than a fair few copies of R Factor 2 even though a lot of you guys <laughs> absolutely hate me on the R Factor 2 side of things, or the, you know, the, the set of courses side of things, or the the automobilista side of things, or the iRacing side of things, or the race room racing experience side of things. It, but, like, like, honestly, I'll sum this up in the easiest way I possibly can. Over the course of doing this whole YouTube thing, I have been accused of being paid by the developer of every sim out there. <laughs> I've been paid off by everybody. Yep, yeah, that's, the, that's the story. But no, I haven't. In fact, the only, only free stuff I've received by doing this are the pedals that I spoiled a logo for, you know, at the beginning of the videos now, as well as a, I guess, quote-unquote, press pass for Race Room Racing Experience, the game which I cover the least. Like, stop being paranoid. Let's play the games. Let's have fun. Let's enjoy. Let's show guys why sim racing is so much fun, rather than this. So, just some food for thought. Just an opinion, man. So hope you guys enjoyed. I bye.